Hello and welcome to my bench. My name is Jerry and this is a, another episode of Jerry's Basic Jewelry Bench Work. Uh, you will find this episode is very similar to one I shot earlier about making aglets. Uh, the episode I made before was Type 1 aglets and as a bit of a refresher, Type 1 aglets are formed entirely around a mandrel and then uh, attached to the cord or material that they're going to be used for as a uh, lace. I'll put that away. Now we're going to be making type 3 aglets and those are actually formed around the cord as they are made. So a little different. Uh, we will start with some 34 gauge brass blanks. Uh, and we're going to use just a piece of cotton cord right now, uh, aglet on the other end already, and we will work from there. Uh, let's start with this one. What we want to do is we want to preform the aglet around our mandrel. Uh, basically, we're kind of starting by making a type 1 aglet. Okay, so that the seams come meet, but they don't overlap, because that's important at this first step. Uh, you want the seams to be there, because you will be folding them in in a, in a few moments. If you can see what I'm doing, I'm trying to keep this in the range of my cell phone camera. Okay, and... Set that over there until we need it. And oops, this is a new new anvil for me. I'll show it to you in a moment. But we're going to use a burnisher, and we're going to just burnish this metal down over the uh, mandrel. That's very important. Now you're probably thinking, but Jerry, that looks just like a type 1 aglet, but the seam isn't meeting. If you notice that the seam in this, I'm trying to get this to the phone, and it's not showing very well. Okay, there we go. That's up at least. The seam is not meeting, okay? That's important, because now we're going to put the cord in there. But first, let me show you the anvil. The sample I made, it is based on uh, examples and illustrations and paintings of people making aglets uh, from about, I think the earliest image was somewhere in the early 1500s, the latest one was just after 1600, maybe 1650, not going to be quotable on that one, I have to check the dates to verify them. Because unfortunately, I don't read German very well. So, but uh, let's see. What you want to do is you want to take your cord now, you know, kind of twist it where it's a little smaller, and you might want to put a little bit of adhesive on there too. Like a, they probably would have used a hide glue, and that probably would help twirl this in there. There we go. Now I'm just twirling this. You know, kind of forcing it in as far as I can go in the aglet. Okay. So we got it about two-thirds of the way in there. Okay, now in type 1 aglets, I've not found any evidence whatsoever that pliers were ever used. But I have seen on one partial aglet evidence that I interpret as uh, plier marks for this next step. Basically, I'm going to use some pliers which have a uh, jaw that's flat on the top and cut back a little bit and the other one's pointed. See how that works? I'll put it over my shirt so you can see it. So you can see how that has a little gap there. Okay. Now, the reason for that is when I go in to crimp, I lay that line right on the seam and it crimps very nicely. Boom, boom, boom. And now 
now that is all in there. And I've started to fold down one seam with the pliers. Okay, come on. I'm still learning this for this type of aglet. So, okay, well, goes down. Now that seam, that cord is actually in there pretty tightly. I could yank it out if I wanted, but I don't. So now the next trick is we're going to take a brass hammer, which is the same metal as the aglet. You know, you want to use uh, the, a hammer made of the same metal I discovered because that leaves way fewer marks that have to be cleaned up later. So we're going to put this in a groove here, find a groove that fits, and we're going to just kind of, can you see that? Yep. Okay, we're going to just hammer this over, and we're going to start rolling this metal down. And the idea is that we will end up with here. And to finish it up. And there you have it. A finished aglet that is formed around the cord. It's fairly tight. Uh, should work fine. And uh, there you go. Type 3 aglet. Uh, that's what my research has shown so far, what I've discovered or rediscovered. So, uh, you know. If you have any questions, feel free to email me or make comments on the video. I will try and get to them. And uh, don't forget to uh, visit my website, livingstonjewelers.com. Uh, and I have a lot of information there about aglets. So thank you for watching, and I look forward to uh, hearing from everybody. Thank you very much.